Hi guys and welcome back to Iris Podcast 2020 where we celebrate and love and drop it like it's hot to all things queer and LGBTQ. I am your podcaster, your host and put the function in dysfunctional, Kide. Beep, 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 beep. I'm hoping by now the sound people have realised that I really want a theme tune and they start putting that in. Today with us in the studio we have the lovely Michael whose film Better has been shortlisted for Best of British and the prize for the winner is services for the next film by Pinewood Studios, and they will get a UK-wide audience with all four, with Film 4 on all four. Hi, Michael. How's it going? Hello. I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm really good. Thank you for coming to my humble abode. It's lovely. Do you like yes, it? I do. do. Like, I'm really yeah. into my feng shui right now. It's very I'm, natural. Yeah, thank I, you. I, I just, believe it. Thank you. I'm just trying to ground myself <laughs> and just really feel... You do your own production design. Yeah, no, I do. I I I've designed all this myself no, with no good. help from Harrison at all. No, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so how have you been? What have you been up to? Uh, I'm fine, yeah. We, we came through from London uh, this morning. Nice. Uh, and we've spent a nice day in Cardiff. Lovely. Kirsty's my producer who's with me as we wanted to do some shopping, but she hasn't managed yet. Hi, Kirsty. She's off screen. But we see her and but feel she, her. But she's she, she's in your home as yes, well. Yes, she is also in my home, yeah. wandering around the third floor yeah, well, in the yeah, West yeah, Wing. Of course. <laughs> and that's a really strong London accent I'm hearing as well. You are, yes, yeah. Very traditional, very you know embedded in the, the culture of London. Yeah, where are you actually from? I am from Glasgow, oh, originally. Nice. And uh, yeah, I went to school up there, studied there, and then moved down to London about eight years ago. Oh, bro, what did you study? I studied uh, film production at oh, nice. the Royal Scottish Royal Conservatoire of Scotland. <laughs> It changed its name it from did. the Royal Scottish Academy of Music and Drama when I was there. And <laughs> um, we were the first year to graduate the new name. Uh, so, I, yeah, I studied there, the film production, and then following that moved uh, down south and started working there. And that has been the story. And that, that's your whole since life. Since then, that's it. Yeah. Nothing else happened. I, was, no, I was born, went to university. Yeah, and then, great. Uh, then came you do seem yeah. very put together. So I feel that, that you've just yeah. aged very I'm, quickly. I'm, you know, I'm almost nine years old now. Yeah, so I can, I can yeah, tell. That's good. <laughs> So, I like to treat my interviews a little bit like a first date. Okay. If that's okay for you. Well, yeah, it depends what your parameters well, you'll are. Well, have to see what happens on my first depends date. Depends what, what, what base we get to. Yeah, um, you, well, we'll see. See if you play your cards right. Well, so I'll try. Just try and get to know you a little mm. better and just really get a sense of who you are. So, first question, which I view as the most important question a person can be asked. Okay. What is your star sign? We're, we're disagreeing already as to whether that's an important question, but uh, Scorpio is my star sign. Does that say a lot about my... I'm a Scorpio too. Oh, wow. Well. This is why we're vibing. Made to be. We're meant to be together. Yeah, yeah. I just yeah, for feel sure. it. Well, yeah. now, no, now I know how to like maneuver you through questions. No, for sure. Yeah. Because yeah, you're a Scorpio. It's, it's very connected to my... Yeah, of course. Well, you're just, you're just a mysterious story. sign. Mm. So you like to hold back. So I'll, 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 I'll get through eventually. You can, you can ease out what you need to. <laughs> I can indeed. Base three. But yeah, Go. and we're done. Cool. Yeah. And um, will you, you're taking the bill, yeah? Oh, of course. Wicked, yeah. thank or, you. Or only a gentleman would. Thank you so much. <laughs> Question two. Mm. If you could have any superpower, what would you have? I've always wanted to be able to fly. I mean, I'm sure that's a very standard answer, but... It is, you know. but it's a good answer. And your home doesn't have a roof, so I could, I could yeah. practice it now. <laughs> exactly. I couldn't afford the roof. Well, of course. Times yeah. are hard. I've um, spent a lot on decor. Yeah, so, of course. Yeah, well, that was good. the main point. It's a bit mm. cold sometimes, but... No, oh, I'm feeling it. I'm quite <laughs> I'm comfortable. <laughs> And last question, mm. what would you say is your favourite thing about yourself? Favourite thing about myself? I love throwing people off with that. Mm. Well, I don't know, it taps into whether you're, whether you're arrogant or overly modest. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I think Perhaps that... I've got too many answers or can't think of yeah, any. Yeah, maybe. I'm going to go with yeah. you've got too many answers. Possibly got too many answers. <laughs> no, I just think that I... people... Oops, sorry, no, go. Well, I, 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 I feel like I like to think a lot. And okay. I think that's my, my desire to think... That's quite abstract, but... It is, but I but, like it. But you can take what you want from it. No. I think that's important for filmmaking. Yeah, no... If for, we're going to connect it back to the, yeah, if we're gonna, the topic at hand. No, I'm just going to go on a tangent now. Okay. Um, and watch favourite food. No, I'm kidding. I um, think about that too. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Do you really? Sometimes. All the time? A lot of the time. I think okay. about it now. <laughs> so... Since we're talking about film, let's mm. tangent in because yeah. otherwise we'll be here forever. I gave you, a good and, uh, segue. you did. It was a really mm. good segue. Do you want to do this interview? We, 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 we could run it that way. Should if we you just wish? swap? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Talk so about what have you made? <laughs> a mess of my life. Well, well we're here now. Well, we're so here now. We'll, so we'll, we'll deal with the cards we've been dealt. <laughs> I cannot talk about the emotional roller coaster that I was on with your film. It okay. Was That'll be a short podcast then. Say again? Yeah, no, yeah. I, I can't talk about it. <laughs> So we're done. Thanks for joining, guys. This has been great. <laughs> no, it was just I didn't expect where it was going to go. 
and the feelings that I felt. It was mm. it was ama- I really really liked it. I thought it was brilliant. Good. Um, Thank you. <laughs> but I have to say that because you do. You <laughs> no, yeah. I really did. It would be rude otherwise. Yeah, of course. Mm. And I have invited you here, so you have. Yeah. <laughs> what was your inspiration behind making it? Uh, so yeah, so I uh, I didn't write it, but I wrote it with um, our writer Lucy Heath, who's mm-hmm. also the star of the film. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it was it was a combination of just some of uh, my interests and some of hers. She was originally interested because she'd suffered quite a lot from anxiety um, when she was younger, and she'd always thought, well, how how wonderful would it be if if there were really just a, a quick fix to that, you know? And it's something obviously anybody in a in a dire enough situation hopes for. And then it sort of got us thinking about, well, how how do we place this in a in a sort of culturally and contextually relevant space? And then the idea of a sort of approach to conversion therapy we, we, we found interesting because I, I think that's the kind of undertone, although not explicitly stated in the film. It's sort of, yeah, well, what if conversion therapy actually worked? Because I guess the interesting question to me is, is the, well, where's the, where does the controversy lie in something like conversion therapy? Is, is it the fact that it's at base ethically wrong or is it, or is, is it the fact that it's, morally problematic because it actually is is scientifically invalid as well so so you know if you were offered this potential to change your sexuality or 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 enough about your persona so that you were able to better integrate with the culture as it is is that something you would do and I, I, it seems like it definitely would be tempting even if it raises kind of uh, ethically existential questions wow that was a great answer. <laughs> it was, Good. It was a really abstract bad answer. again. Abstract. But there we go. You didn't really say anything. We're just, we're just yeah, we're, we're just we're, saying words. We're going to go on a very abstract roller coaster tonight. No, it was tonight, lovely. So and it's uh, something that you said uh, hmm. then about would you choose to this uh, to better integrate um, yeah. this struggle that the mother feels with her child about like wanting them to be who they are versus them getting protected from the cruelties hmm. of like the world and like that internal struggle was like really. Like, like painful mm. but like uh, connect what's we're looking for emotionally integrated yeah say integrated Perhaps. again yeah maybe yeah so well, i mean i think for me it was like well you know the, the balance is again between you know are, are you as an individual are you pushing trying to push forward like a a social justice movement i mean i think i think if we were all viewing ourselves as individuals as part of a a collective social movement we would be looking to you know eradicate the kind of culture that makes it problematic to be lgbt um but then also as individuals you know we're responsible for our families and our, our you know our children and our, and our own um well-being and 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 that is in at least in some part how you respond to the culture that already exists and you know one person isn't going to change uh, that culture at least most people as individuals won't change that culture and if you care enough about your child not as part of a, a collective socio-political movement but as a but as a as an individual it's like well are you going to are you going to pick their well-being or are you going to put them forward as as part of a, a movement to change society and it, you know that that's not a an obviously answerable question i think that was what we found interesting about posing that question is there isn't an obvious answer to that and although popularly you should be you should be seen to be advocating for a not wanting to change who you are and you know stand by who you are i think the the realities of existence you know hit people hard and and uh, it's definitely a tempting thing and 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 i guess the film raises the question is it, is it a justifiable thing yeah totally and it, it, back on like sort of relating to that question you you can see that it's got nothing to do with that she doesn't love her kids or she doesn't mm. accept it. She absolutely it's precisely because yeah, it's exactly because mm. and th- even like the first scene, uh, like near the beginning when they're um, sitting down and they're watching like queer programming, mm. and you know a lot of parents would will wouldn't even expose uh, kids to that. Um, was that something that you wanted to make sure that you were showing sort of like um, parents bonding over sort of LGBTQ programming without? Worrying about age. Well I, well, I guess it put the impetus on her in some sense because, you know, w- when she's having to make the decision, you know, it, it is his manner and his his lifestyle that she's helped cultivate at odds with his culture. Mm-hmm. And, 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 you know, there are, there are, it is 
a result of her parenting, at least in some part, as much as you accept that, um, you know, how a child evolves is 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 nurture as well as, well as nature. Um, you know, she's played a, a part in that and she's played a part in what is also making it so difficult for him, despite the fact that her motivations were definitely, uh, at least hypothetically, virtuous. You know, she wanted she wanted him to be who he was. But, you know, the, that the eternal question with parents is, you know, do you encourage them to to uh, what would you say? Do you encourage them to 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 continue their journey as they might otherwise without your interference? And it's also not easy to see what that would be because you know you can't let a six month year old just live their life as they would do otherwise they starve and die um but it's like you know so how much how much influence is is affecting what he's going to go through and then how much is beyond that how much is it her responsibility to potentially undo what she's done mm. no for sure and it, it, it seems like I don't she's know if that was very coherent but no what well, I, I totally got it I other people somewhere. might but we'll see it's only us here so <laughs> <laughs> um You've lost my train of thought now. Thanks. Okay. Well, <laughs> um, no. Um, she, the, she seems like she's trying to accept it and just let them be who they want to be as much as they can. And then obviously she sees the video, and it's like the straw that breaks the camel's back for mm. her because that's the last thing you want for your child is to see them in sort of pain or struggling. Mm. And sort of getting called names is kind of obviously horrible, but mm. you can kind of, as a parent, tolerate that. But when you see them getting like hit and you don't actually even see mm. what's on the video but you can hear it and mm. you, your mind goes wherever it goes well it's potentially darker than that yeah you know we're, we're not sure and i think we wanted to keep that abstract enough surprisingly um <laughs> we, wanted to keep, <laughs> we wanted to keep that abstract enough so that you know that your imagination could go somewhere and it, you know it, it, it might go darker than than necessary but you know that the, these things are always possible um and i think yeah it was just to that moment where her labors to make his life better were kind of thrown back in her face in an uncomfortable way and there's you know you know viewing especially with with social media as, as everything's filmed and you know as a lot as you know a lot of our kind of social movements at the moment are instigated by amateur coverage of mm -hmm. the of these events so it, you know it holds people to account but it also reveals you know the kind of behavior that would otherwise be hidden so we wanted that kind of visceral moment where you could you could certainly hear and feel her initial reaction and it, it, it's and it was a kind of mixture we, we wanted to communicate that it was a mixture of her seeing someone she loved in pain but also knowing that or certainly suspecting that she played a hand in that and that that's that's almost that's almost worse than just the pain it's like it's like well perhaps i also was the the evil behind it yeah even no. if i didn't mean it yeah totally mm. no it, it, that all come through the film i was literally like mm. sitting in cornwall just like in a, I've, got, I've got away with my it's not for people in cornwall. it's not for people in cornwall i did they say that they, we <laughs> it was yeah. a disclaimer at the that start of the it. film yeah um it is actually for you people in cornwall just you can you, know. you can watch it you yeah. are more than welcome to watch but you it. might you might break down similarly. yeah <laughs> but yeah I, me awesome. and my family were staying on this like really lovely like house <laughs> and i spent the day like watching the films and i was just sitting there like why because you I could imagine, just imagine a lot of them were were emotionally yeah well just it's exactly like you said this like pain that you feel when you're like oh okay they're feeling this but also by the actions that i've mm. made has also mm. potentially caused this to us and mm. well, well it's well it, you know I, I sort of drew a parallel with because you, you read about you know soldiers that come back from war and they you know they, they suffer ptsd and actually you know from a psychological perspective a lot of a lot of the time it's it's when they you know when they go through and have conversations with clinical psychologists and stuff it's, it's revealed that actually the thing that damages them is not what they've seen but what they did and you know they these and it's, it's not as if they've not seen a lot of horrible stuff mm -hmm. but it, it, it's the it's when they recognize what they're capable of it's like that that can be darker than you can imagine yeah mm. wow <laughs> on a lighter note <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about one of my mm. favorite parts in it when she comes upstairs and she paints her toenails mm. and she just joins in and helps her well well, well let let me uh let me take the lightness away from that for oh no <laughs> well i guess i guess i guess that you know that's part of this the same discussion isn't it it's like you know a little boy going to school with these nails painted mm -hmm. and while we would all love for that to not cause any issue because you know we we, we all accept that we want to get to a place where these sort of unnecessary um, gender norms aren't enforced by anything other than what they need to be enforced mm -hmm. by. Um, 
and, and then again, that's another example of her sort of taking, potentially placing her, what would you say, placing her personal political stance and a, a mixed with a desire for his well-being, potentially above his, the, the reality of his uh, his circumstance, and mm. you know that that that's all kind of leading towards that, um, towards the moment where she makes a kind of more drastic decision on his part later. I think I think what's kind of what we were trying to go f- for in terms of the kind of more harrowing emotions of the film mm. was that he really doesn't have a hand in any of this, and and, and it's sort uh. of like you know he, you sort of feel that potentially he's led. Uh, her to to allow him to be the way he is but it's that's not so obvious i mean possibly that's her and mm-hmm. possibly you know she has decided he will he will be this pillar of her political virtue or something like that and and uh and but, sh- but she's made his decisions the entire way through and i think that you know that one of the sadder things is and you know there's parallels to be drawn with um you know how people raise lgbt kids and especially trans kids at, 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 at young age it's like just how much autonomy do they have? And you know, that's the eternal question. It's why it's such a political struggle to talk about these things is there really isn't an obvious answer. At least to me, there doesn't seem like an obvious answer. You know, we've got a, a battle between, um, you know, this kind of instinctual empathy for people, also people's political motivations it, that goes in that go in either direction and also just the reality of being a child that doesn't know what they want and your parents having to make decisions for you and it's like well just how consequential do you want those decisions to be oh <laughs> well well you tried to go light well i and, tried and to I go light and apparently i'm not allowed to have yeah. a good part. <laughs> i'm not allowed to be happy about this film apparently but but, but, it no, is, no, but, it's, but it's also sweet i mean i will i will you know that you know the, the things the, these you know the, the idea of, of making anything is you hope it's layered in in, in some some manner so yeah, I think I think you know there, there, it's touching because on, on a human to human level, that moment is 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 kind, mm-hmm. and 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 it's something that regardless of whether she's led him to want this, he does want it at mm-hmm. the time, and 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 she's supporting him even though we we see her feel this um, dilemma beforehand. Yeah. Um, so while it plays a part in you know kind of where the where the narrative goes, I think you know on a, on a just on a kind of instantaneous human to human level, it's definitely a a, a sweeter moment of. Mm-hmm of uh, <laughs> mother son friendship yeah no i t- i mm. it, it's great and it obviously should be layered i'm just not smart <laughs> i'm just not smart enough to think <laughs> i was not smart just not smiling to yeah i'm just there crying i would refuse to smile i just refuse I, to I smile i will not waver on that no. i will, will <laughs> no, not um, smile you're absolutely right and it's something mm. that i hadn't even thought about that mm. i and it's making me think back to when i was a kid side note this is going to be about me now um when i was younger oh, um, no, like when mm. I was younger, there was this girl in primary school that I used to love, Shanice Elliott. If you're listening, you were my first love. And I wanted to take a, it was Valentine's Day and I wanted to take a like these massive bouquet of flowers in like this teddy bear. And my mum was like, mm. well, no, it's too, it's too girly. You can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do mm. that. And she was like, because the boys will make fun of you. And it's that thing where you're like, your kid wants to do something, mm. but you know what the effect's going to be if they do. And yeah, you're totally right about the. Well, that's the battle, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, it's like, well, yeah, I mean, y- you very likely would have been bullied i probably would and i was anyway so then, i should have just well, taken the flowers well <laughs> well but that's the other that's the yeah. other question i mean that might also be true it's like well just how how do you become more resilient it's like well maybe you do just do the things that you want to do and, mm. and deal with the consequences but that's the that's a hard thing to ask a parent to do yeah but possibly they should be i don't know and then just get the therapy later yeah right. <laughs> that's what yeah. i did well, you and know, i'm a well-adjusted human exposing, now exposing yourself to difficult situations because that's at the heart of this as mm-hmm. well it's like well you know, you want to be a resilient person. You, you don't want to be someone that's just protected from from uncomfortable experiences. So, you know, so perhaps you know, in your your situation, if you've been sent with the flowers, maybe maybe that would have been a good thing. Who knows? We'll, we'll, we'll never know. We, we won't. We'll never know. Me and Shanice could have been married now. You could with have been a giant family, three I kids. Would, I would be surprised with a house with a roof. Would have been great. Well, that would have been yeah. Would I mean, have been, that would have been the dream. That extra yeah. extra dollar would have. Uh, that's yeah, would what have, did it. I would, would have, have had the flowers covered your covered your house. <laughs> So, you know, with the, the kids that were in the film, mm. did you ever talk to them about any of the sort of like non-binary transgender kids um, and issues of that sort of nature? Mm. And did if you did, how did they react to it? Yeah, so, I mean, we... Well, not in such specific terms. So the, the, the films were about not fitting in fundamentally. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I think, you know, we, we had the... 
um sort of implicit angle of uh, lgbt angle but it, i didn't view it certainly when we were making it as as primarily an lgbt film it was, it was a film about difference and about wanting to um fix difference and 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 the you know the the question there being you know, do you want to fix difference or is, or is, or is being different as part of you know the tapestry of our culture a good thing even if it's a difficult thing so i mean i talked to the so um Micah, the, the 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 lead boy in it, I spoke uh, to him at, yeah, at length about you know about how he felt at school and obviously mm -hmm. and and he definitely he had some interesting stories about that because obviously he's been he's acted quite a lot you know he, this wasn't his first thing he'd done quite a lot of television and film stuff before which is obviously an unusual experience for for a kid so you know that I think they understand you can you can sort of abstract out the principle of of, of what you're trying to get and and talk to them in in generalities in a way that they're able to relate to their own experience um but no i we didn't talk specifically about what it would mean to be non-binary mm -hmm. i'm not even sure what it means to be non-binary in any in any deep sense mm -hmm. and i wouldn't wish to cast um you know my own as aspersions on that it's not it's certainly not something i've, I've experienced mm -hmm. or and I, I don't know many people who, who identify that way so i didn't feel wholly qualified to have have that discussion but um but no, I, th I think I think there are general principles that apply to anything where you where you feel different from others and how you deal with that. And I think it, you know that is about strength and resilience and reacting to you know the situation you find yourself in. So we 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 talked about about that. Yeah, cool. No, I was just mm. I, was, I was interested to know what how mm. we, I I have a lot of kids in my family, so mm. um, I talk to them. I mean, I say kids now; they're like fifty. Um, but I talk to them a lot about like. Uh, gay culture and LGBT mm. culture and I would just I'm always interested to find out mm. what younger people see it as because mm. there's a lot of talk about oh this does this to kids and overexposing them to this but mm. when I've any kids I've actually spoken mm. to have not felt it in sort of an oppressive way so just I'm well just it's curious. well it's like I mean I think you know talking to kids about LGBT I mean it's like talking to kids about any culture I think you know there are parts of it that are appropriate for children and parts of it that aren't I mean a lot of LGBT culture is sexualized just like a lot of other cultures mm -hmm. sexualized and you don't talk to them about those parts but you can, i mean there's, there's there's absolutely no reason why you can't talk to kids about the variety of you know romance and relationships mm -hmm. and like you would about anything else but i i, I, I don't think i think the people who complain about that and people who advocate for it in some manner pl place a false dichotomy it's like well you either talk to them about every part of lgbt culture or you or you you say it's taboo it's mm. like well clearly that's not the case i mean clearly you can you can decipher what's appropriate and what's not appropriate and the idea that two men might fall in love is clearly one of the appropriate parts but you know talking to them about you know anything else and anything else anything, anything you know, past third base well, well precisely yeah, yeah well <laughs> by the end of this shouldn't be watching the end of this interview, yeah definitely I would, not i would imagine <laughs> um but clearly that's you know that that's that's a different matter now whether i mean I'm sure there's larger conversations to be had about about you know how much kids should be talked to about sexual experience and all that kind of stuff. But, that, but I think you know within our understanding of yeah. what's appropriate for children, I, I, I think the same kind of rules apply to cultures of all sorts. Of course, no, I totally agree. Mm. But back to the, uh, back to the kids. That's a weird sentence. Mm. Um, throw myself off of that. They so they uh, they call um, the the kids so many like like hurtful names and stuff and they bully him and stuff mm. um and there always seems to be like especially with like teenagers and kids this sort of like allowance for like homophobic mm. like slur and it all, almost becomes normalized in the sense that if someone if said something racist to me mm. it would be pulled up a lot quicker yeah, yeah, sure. than if i like when they're running pa they run past mm. uh, him down the thing and they like mm. gay boy blah 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 but if they called him the, the n-word mm or anything else then mm. then it's a problem so mm. I, I just wanted to know your thoughts on that yeah i mean i mean i think there is definitely i mean i think you know racism and homophobia have different and similar histories mm -hmm. um i think i think it was it definitely isn't it's not i i don't know how much it's normalized now in in, okay. in some parts i mean i'm not at school anymore it certainly was normalized <laughs> Well, I, I would I would say I would say conversations about race, it, it, from from a kind of racist standpoint, and conversations about sexuality from a homophobic standpoint, were at different places. Certainly, when I was at school, it definitely was 
kind of seen certainly within the kind of student population mm -hmm. to be for it to be okay to use homophobic slurs i i don't know if it would have been okay to use racist slurs i would agree that there's a disparity there i do think there's a different a different history I'm not i'm not quantifying i don't think yeah. you can quantify what's worse or otherwise i think they are distinct problems they share the same issue of course mm -hmm. they share they share a kind of identity tribalism that's mm -hmm. just not good for anyone um but we won't go there yes no we um, shan't, <laughs> <laughs> no, we shan't. but uh, uh, over a beer later per perhaps <laughs> but yes but i think but I, th I think you know the, the root of of any kind of of any kind of bigotry is 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 a kind of you know uh, tribalism and uh, but and and each and each, each correcting for these Correcting for the fact that people think these distinctions have value, which mm -hmm. is probably you know the actual heart of the issue, is they travel at different rates. And and I, yeah, but I would agree. I think that homophobia is taken in its explicit forms and in its more subtle forms very casually. Mm. Uh, perhaps up until very recently, I, th I think it probably is. We're we're definitely making progress, and I think we're making progress along all of these all of these fronts. But certainly when I was at school, it was, you know, and I, I did it as well. I think anyone that pretends they didn't is lying. Mm. Um, you know, used, you know, gay as a, as a slur. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was quite common. Um, I don't know really how to answer that question. Yeah, no, I, think, okay. I, think, I think I agree with the fact that it is, it is normalized. And I, I, as not having experienced racist, um, I, racist abuse it's hard for me to speak experientially on that i mean we can talk abstractly we again. can absolutely um, but but from an experiential perspective I, I i i it's hard for me to compare those two yeah no of course mm. i totally i totally understand it was just kind of one that just popped mm. into my head because obviously like as a gay person of color mm. i always wonder why intersectional problems yeah intersectional problems i'm like <laughs> where do i go yeah <laughs> um but like i said if someone was racist mm. to me i'd be very confrontational mm. about it yeah where if someone's homophobic to me mm. i'm more likely just to like walk away and pass it off and i mm. don't know even internally why mm. i don't feel like it angers me as much well it's possible as, that as just as an, as, an, as an individual you just need to pick your battles i mean you yeah can't, you can't you can't be you don't want to be angry and bitter all the time oh yeah absolutely i'm also middle eastern so there's just a there's lot just of just a lot going on there's there. just a lot of but a yeah, lot I mean, of battles i need yeah, to fight i mean i think as you know everyone everyone's individual and everyone's you know the individual is comprised of all of the identity groups that you belong to in mm -hmm. some unique intersectional way so i mean yeah i mean if, if things you know that there's certainly recently obviously there's been a lot of focus on on sort of racial tension and stuff like that so it's, 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 it's i'm not trying to diagnose <laughs> yeah, you but yeah <laughs> but, it, but it's certainly <laughs> possible that you know that certain things are heightened in certain circumstances no i mean i don't i prefer not to take offense to things I, I tend not to take offense to things i try to view um people as a result of their of their experiences ignorant or otherwise and you know we can talk about things from there but but uh yeah no i, I agree I, I think there's a different there's a different social context that yeah. racism is existing in at the moment and you know obviously has done but it's certainly consciously at the moment that i can understand why you might feel like a more visceral response to that Fair. Just turned this all back to me again. It's literally like no, my it's therapy session. It's interesting. Yeah. I love yeah. it. Good stuff. So let's get back. Let me get back to the film because <laughs> it is worth stuff talking about. I actually know what I'm so, talking yeah, about. Rather no, than just hit, so you hit all this out of yeah. the bag. And, yeah, and I don't compliment people for nothing. Oh, well, is that true? No, I don't. <laughs> you, yeah, you can ask possibly. them. He's been, he's been friendly all Harrison day. will tell you. <laughs> um, what was your favorite scene mm. in the film? Or the one that moves you the most? Mm. Well, it's hard to know what moves me the most because I know them all intimately and and in okay. and in very uh, in a very kind of detailed way that that makes it. I think you know. I think as with anything, when you're working on something, when you when you focus on the micro detail, it's very hard to view things in the macro and experience them emotionally. So, nodding when you say macro, like I know what's going on, big and small. Cool. Thank you so much. You can look at things in detail. You can things in the in the, in the larger <laughs> Thank sense. Thank you so much for that. Um, but uh, that sounded very patronizing. I'm no, so it didn't. But you did ask. So, but, and so, I so already I thought you were patronizing. So. <laughs> I'm joking. He's I mean, very lovely. And patronizing. You can no, be both no, things. You can be both. Um, the world is full of things. blacks yeah. and whites and greys. <laughs> it's grey. Definitely grey. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, I actually like the, like the moment in the, um, in the clinic. Just the sort of, I guess what you'd say it was like the sort of penultimate moment before she makes the decision. Mm -hmm. I think it's always nice when you, in a film where you feel like... Uh, 
all the component parts of the film up to that point and have led somewhere and this is this is the kind of decision moment so that for me that ha- that that has the most tension in it and mm. i think you know tension creates cinematic moments as everyone knows deep mm. yes as everyone does know mm. a deep cliche yeah <laughs> um that whole like um call it a surgery for all intents and purposes Mm. is feels so psychotic Mm. and for me i don't know if this was meant to or if anyone else felt this when they watched it but like psychotic like it's just the whole like um how do i explain it this whole like uh, robotic y like i can't Mm. believe this actually exists and this is what is happening Mm. and just barbaric yeah just complete great and then sort of mirroring like their behavior and like being a bit off just sort of mm. mirrored her like emotional state and mm. it was just, i was just like oh god it's a lot but it was like detached yeah i think was that was was the the attempt there was that it just felt well i guess when you remove that was another sort of idea i think we had that was that when you remove the kind of complexity of subjectivity from thing from from any scenario and you you try to view things purely scientifically or purely objectively you know there's a lot missing when you remove subjectivity from from issues surrounding identity and and sexuality and and all of these kind of things, and I think that I think what was so eerie about it is that we don't view a, an individual's identity as something that that is objectively quantifiable in a in a in a scientific sense. So then, trying to make those changes in in a in a purely objective scientific way feels inappropriate, and I think the I think that the kind of oddness of that was because you're dealing with something so so subjective and so human and we we aren't just science you know we we're we're we're, we're more than that we're 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 science as, as, as in terms of our structure but you know clearly there's there's more to life than just the objective things that make you up you know that there's our subjective experience and you know, there's the love between families, and there's the you know the you know the, the the ethical dilemmas we have, and that's a different domain from from the from the objective. So I think the fact that it was taking an objective stance on something subjective was what made that uncomfortable to watch. Hopefully, no, it, it did mm. in, in, like a good uncomfortable, not like a mm. I'm I I want to turn this off. off. I've shut my. But computer. you might. I mean, you're nope. welcome to turn it off. You won't. Yeah. I promise you. Anyone that watches it <laughs> definitely will not turn this off. I really want to keep talking to you for ages, but that's all we've got time for. That's all right. I'm afraid. So I have just one last question for you. By all means. Do you think this color palette works or should I change it? <laughs> I think it's, I think it's, of, of, I think it suits you. Do you think it suits me? Mm. That's, yeah, that's good. So There's I, a lot of colors going on. I don't know if anyone can see the carpet, but it's, it's, uh, well, yeah, like it's I said, they match ex- the drapes. Exuberant. Yeah. Exuber- vibrant. Likely. I, I, I hope this doesn't match the drapes. <laughs> What do you mean? <laughs> you don't. <laughs> anyway, side note. Base six. <laughs> and we're done. <laughs> Did like two rounds. Thank you so much for no spending Thank time you very with much me, for me and spending time talking about your film. Guys, mm. please, 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 if you get a chance, watch better. Um, watch better. Better. Watch better. Watch it all. Watch it all. However you pronounce <laughs> it, just watch it. Um, you've lost, I've lost my train of thought again. Mm. I just keep getting lost in your eyes. Well, I, I, I imagine it without glasses. Yeah, oh. well, um, no, thank you so much mm. for being here. Guys, if you get a chance, please, please, please subscribe to Iris Podcast. Also, follow me on Instagram, like could use the validation. We'll catch you soon. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>